In the third part of this presentation, I would like to show you how to use AHP to quantify factors in a SWOT analysis. I will not go into the mathematical foundations here. If you are interested in these, please read the books by Thomas Sati or have a look at the publications mentioned here on the slides. My goal here is to show you how to apply AHP in SWOT analysis. So take a moment to remember the classical hierarchy in AHP, where we have a goal, we have, we have criteria, and then we have alternatives. In SWOT AHP, the hierarchy looks a little bit different. So here our goal is to quantify the SWOT factors. Then we have the four SWOT groups, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And then we have SWOT factors in each of the groups. SWOT AHP is basically done in four steps. So first, obviously, you come up with a SWOT analysis. And then you collect judgments from respondents. So they do pairwise comparisons of factors within every SWOT group. And then they also come up with a pairwise comparison of the four SWOT groups. You could also, as an alternative, compare the most important factor of each group, but this uh, can be challenging depending on which method of collecting respondent judgments you choose. For example, this can be done in a group decision-making setting where a group uh, jointly comes up with these uh, pairwise comparisons. But you can also ask people to do these uh, comparisons separately and then later on you aggregate the judgments. So the HP calculation then will give you a local factor priority. That means uh, each factor, for example, in the strengths category, so strength one, strength two, strength, uh, strength three, uh, gets a priority, which is relative to the other group factors. And then you can also get a global factor priority. So here you weight the local priority within the group of each factor with the group priority. And the fourth step, obviously, is then the formulation of strategies based on your analysis. So how can this look like? This now is an example from a publication from a study on the Austrian uh, pulp and paper industry. And here the experts also had to bearwisely compare all the factors. And here one example for comparisons, just a second, is to compare the energy efficiency of production processes with the availability of co-generation on-site. So two strengths are being compared. And again, here the respondents can say uh, that the left factor is much more important or the right factor is much more important and choose uh, any value in between. And then this is being done for all the strengths, then for all the weaknesses, uh, opportunities and threats, and then also the categories are compared with each other, which uh, can be seen here on this side, on this slide, sorry. Uh, so here you see that uh, respondents are being asked to compare strengths with weaknesses, and it's again the same scale. To help them, we listed all the strengths and weaknesses here as well. This can be found in this publication by Bosch et al. Strategic Energy Management in Energy Intense Enterprises, published in the Journal of Cleaner Production. If we ask more than one person to come up with such a pairwise comparisons, we also need to aggregate the judgments. And here is an example how this can look like. So here we have seven experts who all came up with comparisons for the SWOT categories. And then we basically just uh, calculate the geometric mean for the judgments as being shown here. So you basically uh, just calculate a geometric mean of all these numbers here. And this is then what you put into the matrix for further calculation. So three factors uh, are being compared and this could uh, be looking like that in this example. So strength one uh, against strength two is one to three, then strength one against strength three is five to one, and strength two to strength three is seven to one. And then we will put these values into a matrix. 
that looks like that. So the di diagonal again uh, is uh, just uh, filled with ones and then the comparisons are just being put into this matrix accordingly. And yeah, here you see what it means, like uh, strength 2 is moderately more important than strength 1, so wins 3 to 1. And here strength war, oh, strength, <laughs> sorry, strength 2 wins uh, 7 to 1 against strength 3. And then we also uh, make this uh, matrix uh, symmetrically, so we basically just put the inverse values uh, into their respective cells. Yeah, like that. And then we use the so-called eigenvalue technique to calculate the eigenvector of the resulting matrix. I will show you later in an Excel file how this will look like. This is being done by multiplying the matrix by itself. Then we calculate the eigenvector by summing up the rows and normalizing the sums. I will also show this in an example. And then we repeat steps one and two until the difference to the newly calculated eigenvector is minimal. Uh, matrix multiplication is being done like that. If you have never done matrix multiplication before, you might look into uh, how this is being done by, for example, just reading the respective Wikipedia article. If you are not interested in such degree of detail, you may just use the matrix multiplication function that is provided by spreadsheet software such as Excel. To check how consistent your judgments and therefore your matrix are, we need to calculate the consistency index and the consistency ratio. Consistency index uh, CI is calculated by dividing lambda max minus n by n minus 1. n is the number of factors in your matrix, and lambda max is derived from the principal eigenvalue. The principal eigenvalue is calculated by summing each column of the judgment matrix, uh, multiplying the sums by their corresponding eigenfactor, and then adding up the products. I will show you this in a second. The consistency ratio is uh, derived from uh, just dividing this consistency index by uh, average consistency index, ACI, a parameter that is basically predefined and based on analysis done by SATI. So we calculate the consistency index. The first step is to multiply the matrix with its eigenvector. Then uh, we get a result from this matrix multiplication. In the step two, we divide this multiplication result uh, with the respective uh, values in the eigenvector, and we get an eigenvalue here. The mean of these eigenvalues is our estimate for lambda max, and we just uh, enter this uh, lambda max value into the equation. Lambda max should always be bigger than n, or bigger or equal than n. So next slide is now calculating the consistency index according to this formula. And here we just enter the values, which should not be all too challenging. So we get here CI of 0 0.084 for this example. And then fourth step, we calculate the consistency ratio. So here we take this ACI parameter from this table, basically, uh, which was yeah, developed by SATI. And as we have uh, three factors in our matrix, our ACI is 0.58. So we just calculate uh, our CI of 0 0.084 with uh, 0.58 and we get 0.145 as consistency ratio or 14.5%. According to Thomas Sarti, this consistency ratio should be smaller than 0.1 or smaller than 10% uh, if you like. Otherwise it would indicate an inconsistency in your judgment matrix. Now we have a value that is uh, a little bit uh, bigger than that. But you will see, maybe also in your own exercises, that it's actually very difficult to come up with highly consistent pairwise comparisons. So very often you will have values slightly higher than 10% uh, or 0.1. So 
It's also the reason why, especially in empirical research, so when the consistency of the judgments is not immediately checked, but you just collect the judgments from experts, uh, you will have uh, fairly higher consistency ratios, and this then is also being accepted. Okay, so what is left is now to do the respective calculations in an Excel spreadsheet. Okay, so let's start the HP calculation in Excel. You remember the pairwise comparisons. I have copied them here just uh, to make it easier to transfer them into the matrix. So S1 to S2 is 1, 2, 3. So I just write 1, 3. By the way, I'm using here the German language actual version. So some of the formulas might be different in your version. Then S1 to S3 is 5 to 1. So I just write one, uh, 5. And then we have S2 to S3, which is 7 to 1, so just write 7. Then we need to have the inverse values to have a symmetric matrix. So I here write 1 over this one. And here we have 1 over this one. And finally this one. Okay, so this is now our judgment matrix. We calculate the row sums. Just use this Excel tool here and then copy this down. And the eigenvector is basically the relative value. So uh, it's dividing this row sum through the sum of all row sums like that. Then I also, to, to make copying easier, I will lock these cells. Okay, so this is our first eigenvector. And basically, these are the priorities as established by this uh, matrix. So I now delete this part here to make things a little bit easier. Okay. Step two is multiplying the matrix. And here I already prepared such a second matrix, but it still lacks the values. And we get this now by multiplying the first matrix using matrix multiplication. And here we can use a formula and we want to multiply the entire matrix. So the first thing I do is I mark the cells of this multiplied matrix. Then I press F2 on my keyboard and then I can enter M mult, which is the formula for matrix multiplication. The first argument here is the matrix. And the second argument is also the matrix because we apply, we multiply the matrix with itself. Okay, and then there's also a trick how to fill now the entire matrix with values. I press Control, Shift, and Enter. Again, we will calculate the row sums. And then the eigenvectors, which is again this row sum divided through the sum of these. Okay, again, I lock these cells so that I can copy the formula. These, by the way, always should sum up to one. Okay, and now we said this is being done uh, until the difference between the newly calculated eigenvectors is minimal. And now the difference between the two eigenvectors is not at all minimal, so it's uh, 0.06 for the first two factors. And this matrix multiplication is basically balancing out a few inconsistencies in your judgments. And as you remember, um, the inconsistency 
Well, there was a certain degree of inconsistency in our judgments with this consistency ratio of 14.5%. So basically this uh, operation is balancing out these inconsistencies. But if we do it again, if we do another multiplication of the matrix, that hopefully should uh, balance out. I will now fast forward to the result of this uh, second multiplication. And we can see that now the second eigenvector is uh, not so much uh, different anymore from this uh, eigenvector after the first matrix multiplication. There will be a few differences if we add a few digits. So you see there are still differences, but uh, not in the first two digits. So we can leave it like that and use this eigenvector which represents the relative priorities of the factors. So strength 1 has a relative priority of 0.28, strength 2, 0.65, and strength 3, 0.07. So this process you now can repeat also for the other uh, matrices. And when you're done with that, you will also calculate such a matrix for the SWOT factors. Okay, again, multiply everything, determine the relative priorities of the SWOT factors. And this gives you the local priorities. So for the strengths, we already calculated this. Then you will get group priorities uh, for each strength, for each weakness, for each opportunity and for each threat. And by multiplying these, you get this overall factor priority. I will not uh, show this now because this is uh, quite trivial. But I will show you how the consistency check works. I already have prepared this. Again, we start here with the matrix for the strengths. We have the row sum and we have uh, the eigenvector. We have here the matrix multiplication results. So here we basically you can see multiply this row with the eigenvectors then this multiplication takes the second strength with the eigenvector and likewise we have here the matrix multiplication of strength 3 with this eigenvector here the eigenvalue then is calculated by dividing this uh, multiplication result with the eigenvector and the mean of these eigenvalues gives you the lambda max. Then we just put this into a formula. So our consistency index now is this lambda max minus the matrix size, which is three, divided through matrix size minus one, which is two. And then the consistency ratio just divides this consistency index with this average consistency index, which for a matrix of size 3 is 0.58. And this gives us this 14.5%, which I showed you before in the PowerPoint slides. I believe that once you have understood the basics of the method, it is not so difficult to apply. You can then use uh, SWOT HP analysis for developing strategies for your service, product, technology. Here the SWOT with the cross-category comparisons can provide a nice basis and HP then provides you with a quantitative extension that also tells you on which factors you should uh, focus in your strategy development. As any research method, also SWOT AHP has a number of limitations. I will not discuss all of them, but maybe just a few. Any research method has limitations, as I said, and we need to be aware of that and we need to be transparent with that. If we communicate what our method can do and what it cannot do, uh, it's uh, always the better way than praising a method and uh, pretending as if it would be a perfect one. One limitation clearly is that the sampling strategy will affect your results. 
right? Depends on who does the pairwise comparisons. Depends on whom you ask to do these comparisons for you or if you do them yourself. The results will differ, most likely. Then, only a limited number of SWOT factors can be considered for AHP processing. You always should aim to keep the number of comparisons on a manageable level. If you have three factors per SWOT group, that means three pairwise comparisons. If you have four factors, it's already six pairwise comparisons. And especially if you work with expert samples, they might not be very patient to go through hundreds of comparisons. So it's uh, really important to keep the number of comparisons on a manageable level. That also means that you need to pre-select SWOT factors for the processing with AHP. And you need to come up with some method to do this pre-selection, which again might introduce bias to the results of your study. Then one potential bias could also be your decision whether you have the same number of factors per category or different numbers of factors per category. If you have five strengths and two weaknesses, that might also uh, basically yeah, invite your sample to see the strengths as much more important in overall. On the other hand, uh, the global factor priority of the weaknesses might be uh, higher in your overall analysis. So if you have um, two weaknesses and one maybe has a value of 90%, this already might lead to a rather high global factor priority, even if weaknesses are not considered to be so important in the SWOT factor comparisons. So this is maybe a mathematical problem. Uh, my personal opinion is that it is better to have um, similar or same numbers of factors per category. And then there could be other limitations as well. Uh, I think you will come across a few limitations on your own anyway. Okay, this leaves me with the assignment, which is based on this um, online presentation. First one is, this is what you probably already did now. Uh, in the middle of the video, so please draft a SWOT analysis for better, battery electric vehicles. And for this exercise, it's totally okay to base it on your own perceptions. Think of three factors per group. And then apply the HP method to your SWOT analysis. So you can do all the necessary pairwise comparisons yourself. You might also ask somebody else, but it's not necessary for this uh, exercise. Then you enter your comparisons into an Excel file and you calculate the priorities based on this video presentation here. You can also check for yourself how consistent your own judgments are and how consistent you are in the pairwise comparisons. That's all for today. Thanks a lot for your attention and see you soon.